I'm in a, uh, a hardwood forest here where the understory has really been taken over by coral ardesia. Coral ardesia is a plant from Southeast Asia that does really well in forest understories like this. The plant thrives in, in low sunlight. It doesn't need much sunlight to, to photosynthesize. So it does really well and is able to outcompete many other native plants in this type of a habitat. It grows at really high densities down here. The plant doesn't have a lot of seed dispersal occurring. So a lot of the seeds that are produced on the plant fall under the parent plant. We get really high densities. In fact, I think some of the densities, the plant densities we could find in here would probably be in the four to 600 plant per square meter range. So at that high of a density, you're not gonna have, there's a, a lot of native plants coming through it. There's gonna be an intense competition. And indeed, what we find in this type of habitat is almost a solid coral ardesia understory. Coral ardesia is pretty easy to recognize. And I think on this plant, we can look at some of the characteristics that'll help people identify it. There's nothing else really that looks like it in the forest understory. You know, these plants are about four to five feet tall. Sometimes you see them a little bit bigger, maybe up to six feet tall, but usually they're not that big. The branches grow in these concentric rings around the stem. The bottom branches are the oldest and the younger branches are up here near the top. When a branch first comes out, it has leaves on it, and its, uh, its purpose is to photosynthesize and make energy for the plant. After one year, these leaves will drop off. The plant then is going to produce flowers, and then, and then its purpose becomes reproductive. So you can see on this plant right here how these branches here are two years old, and then these branches here are about one year old. When the plant starts growing this summer, it's going to send out a new series of branches off the top here, and then it'll, it'll just keep growing in height, eventually this stem will die back and then a new stem comes up from the ground, repeating the pattern over and over again. The leaves are arranged alternately along the stem and they get progressively larger towards the end of the branch. These early leaves that grew when the branch was smaller tend to be smaller. And then the, uh, the leaves are arranged pretty flat along the, along the branch. This way this, the plant is more efficient at capturing sunlight for photosynthesis, which is an important trait in the dense shade where the plant tends to grow. Petioles are reddish. If you look at the leaf margins, the leaf margins have this scalloping, and we call that crenate leaf margins, and that's how the plant gets its Latin name. The leaves are dark green and shiny on top, really waxy. This combination of the dark green leaves and the red berries is an unusual combination that you just don't see in the forest. The berries are retained on the plant for a really long time. Not too many birds eat the berries, so the berries will stay on the plant pretty much year round. And in fact, you can find some of these plants that still have berries from last year's seed crop on here. So they're about 13 to 14 months old. The flowers are small, pinkish white with yellow anthers. They grow at the end of the branch and hang in clusters off the end of the branch. After a few months, the flowers result in a green fruit and a branch has a cluster of fruits produced at the end that turn bright red around Christmas time. The fruit is a bright red one-seeded droop. The combination of the dark green leaves and the brilliant red berries I think are a really good diagnostic feature to identify this plant. Unfortunately this is also one of the reasons why this plant gets planted a lot by people. People like the contrast between the dark green foliage and the dark red berries.